So, okay, we're now in the, well, put one bay to one side assembly area, so we can go through this sort of project of explain a little bit more about the machine, not so much how we assemble it, but how the design came around. So clearly, this is the main frame, the chassis of the, uh, the machine, and this is attached to the rear hitch of the tractor. It's a fixed relationship. It's, you know, that's fixed to the rear axle such, and we have a fixed relationship there, and we have a relationship to the axle. On most of these drills, you know, the axle will go up and down and raise the machine in and out of work. So this is all pretty basic stuff at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do now is get the, the guys to, to fit the breaker frame to the front of the legs and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, now we have fitted the, uh, the front frame that carries the breaker legs. Attached to this frame are these legs here that are independent to go up and down. Each ram holds you know, the, the, the leg down into work. In front of the leg is this self pivoting disc that follows the, um, well, pushed in front and acts like a pizza cuts off to cut to the residue and it helps us get very little disturbance on the opening leg. But at the rear of this leg, as you can see, is this small seed chute that puts the fertilizer into the bottom of the tilled strip. So this frame is probably a little different to um, most people. It will go up and down in a quite unique fashion. I could have put this frame just attached to this, and as it came out of work, it would have been slow, but we want a much quicker response on the headlands. So that reacts by this ram coming out, that will lift the frame up, out of work much quicker, and into work quicker. And it comes down onto these stops here that are adjustable. This makes this, this kind of arrangement attached to this rear axle frame makes for a much quicker reaction. If this frame was attached there, it'd be no good. So we, we, we've concentrated on taking it through there, through a pivot and a parallel linkage. The parallel linkage in, is useful because it always keeps its level. Again, if you've got a frame lifting up and down, you get this sort of rocky movement of coming out of work. So I'm really happy with that idea. That works beautifully. The next challenge is, do we want just two depth wheels to control it or should we convert those depth wheels into some sort of packer system? So um, probably our next challenge is now is to fit the, uh, the wheels that make the packer system. Right, we moved on a little bit further with the assembly. So now we can see that the two transport wheels are really being converted to a more useful use of making them to be a two row packer. And the reason for that is now we put one wheel behind each of the legs. So this stagger represents that, that stagger represents that. So now we have an ability to drill and then reconsolidate. But also this axle has worked really well to give me a bit more independence to this frame here. Normally a coulter frame would be part, either a fixed part of the main sashi frame or the linkage would be on there somewhere. But the trouble is the relationship was too direct. So I want a relationship where this frame can go up and down, you know, to, to sort of totally independent of all that, totally independent of the breaker. So this frame is directly related to this axle frame. So it can go up. And now if we come to the front, this frame can go up and down independent. So that frame is going up and down with a relation to that. And this frame can go up and down separate. Now that's particularly useful if we come into a headland. We'll drop down into work, and then this will come down into work afterwards. So, yeah, to me, that is a far better way of going about it because this drill can be a cultivator drill. We're using the front half and press, or it can be just a drill at the back by using the, um, the drilling area, you know, the, the drilling coulter frame. And now we'll go and put some coulters on this to, um, you know, to really start to complete the drill. And all this mechanism may add a little bit of cost to it, but the sophistication I think makes it unique and a very versatile drill. You know, when I go into the field with this, you know, and someone's got a mucky, well, the trailer's been parked to heaven, I can use that as a cultivator. The drilling element's completely out of work, prepare the headlands, then use the machine as a drill. But likewise, quite a lot of people, when they're using the machine, will um, consider maybe. I don't need to use the front legs, I can put a smaller cotton back and use it as a direct drill. And likewise, when you're going up a hill, if this is all into work, if you could put this down, Ted, 
and you're going up a hill, you can keep easing the front frame in and out of work or down a bit. And the reason for that is a lot of drills will get stuck. So if the goes get tough, you just kind of keep easing that out of work. And I think this unique feature of separating the sort of front digging frame and the frame that all the colts are attached to is, is a great and rather unique feature. Now we're going to put the coulters on. So okay, we now have the, uh, the coulter individual assembly frames attached to the front main frame. To this we have a rear wheel that controls the depth and reconsolidates. We have a adjuster that can be lengthened and shortened to, to, to put this coulter in and out of the ground. We have a pressure spring, a hydraulic pressure spring here. And we have a main pivot here that allows it to go sideways to follow the till and up and down. This frame here is now only to really lift a whole lot out of work. It comes ahead and it lifts out of work. And then when we go back into work, this drops down and it drops to a fixed stop. That is now fixed to the ground. This frame doesn't go up and down. The depth of this coulter is obviously controlled by that wheel. And this lengthening and shortening of the adjuster will then have a direct relationship onto that coulter. That's okay. And now that's only affected that colt and none of the others, but that's to demonstrate all these are individual. This relationship is directly to that wheel. Now that's really important because we talked about the earlier in the video about the importance of drilling depth. I want that colt to follow the till. I want it to be able to drill exactly the right depth, the seed put to the side underneath that shelf of soil. And that means that we meet all the drilling regulations. Now, the machine is nearly complete. As you can see, the, the, um, the seed hopper and fertilizer hopper assembly is on. Generally speaking, or well, certainly in our design, the seed is at the back and the fertilizer at the front. There's two lids at the top, waterproof lids. Um, we have an individual meeting unit to each, each of the hopper halves, an air fan system that conveys the seed down to the coulters, and air delivery pipes to the front coulter and to the rear coulter. And that really is the machine complete. What will happen now, the machine will have a PDI inspection where we check every, every sort of part of the machine that's been assembled collectively, and then the machine will be delivered to the farmer. On delivery, uh, we offer a one-day installation where we check the machines on the farmer's tractor correctly, um, go through the operation of the machine, the safety of use of the machine, and see it up the field, and that's about it. But as typically on days like this, normally with a group of students with me, they disappear for coffee, whatever, um, but there's always a handful of you guys stay behind, particularly the engineering students, and you want to pick my brains, you know, how do we make this, why do you do that, and bushing everything. Covered a lot so far, but I suppose if I was going to give you some tips personally, the sort of things I'd say, particularly if you're about to go and get a job with a company of our sort of sizes, think of things like field setup guys, you know, lots of pictures on it, how it's very easy. This is a great thing to have in the cab. And the reason it's useful, you know, this machine, you can see, is, is sitting level. It has to run level for it to do its job. And on these guys, that's talked about. And even at the front of the machine, you know, we have a measurement for that point. So these hitches and the tractors all change in different heights. We have the Schumacher hitch system. You unbolt and put one of these to suit whichever tractor you may have. As I said earlier, tractors are changing. In Germany, in Poland, places like that, Eastern Europe, they tend to hitch much higher. So easy to turn it all around. So things like that really are of, of a great help to us. Um, another thing to think about, quality of build. Where are you going to pitch in when you design a machine? Are you designing a machine, not necessarily on price, but you know, cheap, simple machine that, um, you know, do many years of service, but uh, maybe any, a few years as such then the residual value is going to be quite low on the machine when you, when you part exchange it. For us, you know, some people may say, you know, it's slightly over-engineered, a big machine engineered. There's a lot of steel in it. There are moving parts. Every single one has a grease nipple, but it pays off. These machines at the moment are demanding a second-hand value of the same price or something very similar to what the farmer bought the machine from. And you can say, why is that? The European market is a good second-hand market. That's where the trade want to get machines to go to. Now, these guys are used to having machines that are second-hand, but they expect machines of quality. And what I mean by that, machines that they can replace, I don't know, let's say pins and bushes. Every single pivot point on this machine is, first of all, machine bush like that. 
We could put replacer inserts, a grease nipple on it, a reserve of grease, nipple, of grease inside, and these bushes, pence, they throw away. It's not too difficult to fit those into, into the bush. And then the pin that goes into it is a nice fit, and it's like new. These sort of things are important to me. It costs a little bit more to start with, but it certainly holds the residual value. And I think quality of build is something for you guys to consider. Um, I'm aware of the time I've got. I'd love to go on more, but let's hope that it's not long before we can meet in the more normal fact, you know, fashion. It's, it's kind of weird doing this to a camera, but um, let's hope you guys come visit us soon. And um, thanks for your time. And uh, let's hope we can meet normally again very shortly. Thanks a lot.